So one of the things that I've been doing recently is messing around with NixOS. Now, you guys have probably seen NixOS hanging around on this computer here in the background for a little while now. I've been messing around with NixOS for a little bit. The reason why I bring it up is because the way NixOS does things reminds me of dot file management. A lot of the things that go into NixOS all have to do with treating your operating system like it's a git repository and while that's not technically all that there is to it it still reminded me of that so what i want to do today is just kind of take a look at how i manage my dot files in 2025 i did a video about this probably about four years ago but it's time for an update so let's go ahead and do that but before we jump in, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, it'd be really appreciative. It'd really help the channel. So let's go ahead and take a look at my computer. So this is my OpenSUSE computer. I've been using OpenSUSE for, as you see there, as of recording, 645 days. And that's pretty impressive, if I do say so myself. I have about 85 days left to go on my challenge. What happens after that, I'm not sure yet, but I really like OpenSUSE. So this put that out there. I have stickers and everything to prove it, but that's not why we're here today. That was just a little bit of a tangent. So most of my dot files are in a repository. I have a repository cleverly named repo and I just hint that and you can see I have all of my dot files from basically forever right here. Things that I don't use anymore are even still here. Things like the awesome window manager. I haven't used that in ages yet. I still have a config file for that here in my repository something like the zsh env file which i don't use zsh anymore but i still have my repository for it all of my dot files are right here and they're all managed from right here as well so if you take a look at the prompt here it says on master this is actually my git repository for all of my dots if you go to my GitLab and click on my dots repository, these are exactly the same. You can see them all here, the Alacrity and Awesome and BSPWM and all that stuff right here. So when I make a change to one of these things and then I can add it to my repository, it's just kind of changed here, uploaded there. Now, the question is, how do I then go about making it so that this stuff is where it's supposed to be on the system to actually be used? And the answer to that question is, if I go into my config file and do an ls here, you'll see these ones that are alternately colored. They're like teal or whatever. All of those are symlinks. All I do when I'm in my repository, like so, I just do an ln-s and then I do a full path, so slash mat, my repo, repo, and then the name of the thing. So if I want to do awesome, I could do that. I don't have that already. And then just do slash home, mat.config, like so. And that would give me a soft link to awesome window manager in my configuration directory. That's all I do. And I have a script that I don't actually have on this computer for whatever reason. It's not in my regular script repository. It's on a hard drive. But I have a script that will do all of that for me with the things that I always use. And the ones that I always use are things like my Hyperland repository, the kitty, the kitty directory, MPD, MPV, things like that. NeoFetch isn't what I use anymore. I use FastFetch, which is somewhere along here. It's right here. So all of those are in the script, and it just makes those links for me. So that's really all there is to it when it comes to managing my dot files. I do basically the same thing with my scripts directory. So if I go to my scripts directory, I have a whole bunch of scripts here that I've made over the years. Most of these are pretty, pretty simple and are honestly things that I could delete. So there's ones here that I just, I, I never use. So things like the movie.sh, I don't use that anymore. I could get rid of that. But it, these are things that I want to, uh, you know, I've made over the years and I probably should just go ahead and keep them. All of this stuff is just in a repository that I then upload to GitLab. Now, one of the things that I want to show you that has changed is my ability to make these changes and then upload them to GitLab. So I've created a script called Gitter. So if I give them into Gitter, like so, you'll see this is just a very simple script. It checks the current working directory, saves that to a variable, and then it moves into that directory. It will ask you for the git commit. It'll add everything in that commit to the, to the commit. It will then commit to the repository with that 
message. It'll then push everything and then it will tell you that it's done. That's what it will do. That's all it does and it works awesome. So if I go ahead and quit out of this and I do getter, it'll ask me for the commit message. So I'll just say changes like so and it will then, if there's an error, it will give me an error. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there or why. I will figure that out later. I'll enter my SSH password. It'll tell me that everything is up to date because I'd actually already done that. And I'll hit enter. That's all there is to it. One of the reasons why I did that is because it, uploading my stuff to the repository was always like a three-step process. I would have to get add, get commit, get push, right? I'd have to do that. And I would also have to make sure that I was in the repository that I needed to be in, right? So by having a script to do it for me, it eliminates three of those steps. As long as I'm in the correct repository or in the correct di directory, it will make sure that it, everything's where it needs to be. Then it will just push it right up without me having to do anything other than enter my password. And if I managed SSH properly, I wouldn't even have to do the password thing, but I didn't do that. So that's really the biggest change that I've had over the last four years is that I have an easier way of making sure that all of my stuff is up on GitLab where it's supposed to be. And I upload the stuff every time I make a change. So if I make a change to a script or I make a change to Hyperland or whatever, once I'm done, I put it up via Gitter and it just makes sure that not only do I have a backup, but also if... I'm sharing that with anyone. The most recent stuff is up there on GitLab. So it's not the most complex way of managing dot files. There are other ways, like obviously NixOS and Home Manager do things in a certain way. And there are other applications out there that will manage your dot files for you. I don't want to have to rely on a program to do it other than the ones that I know. So things that are part of the GNU core utils or whatever, like LN or I guess Git's not part of the, the core utils, but things that I use every day I, and I know I can rely on, I use those instead of using someone else's program to do this kind of thing. It's much easier for me. It may not be the most efficient way of doing it, though I've scripted my way to efficiency. I think that this is the proper way for me to do it. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you want to share how you manage your dot files, you can do those do so in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I do a weekly exclusive podcast for all of my supporters. So if you guys support me on any level, you'll get to hear me ramble for about 10 minutes to 15 minutes every week about random nonsense. Some of it is Linux related, some of it's tech related, some of it's just me blowing off steam to people who pay to listen to me for whatever reason. So if that sounds appealing to you, uh, subscribe to me on Patreon or on YouTube and you get, you can get that. If you would rather support me and get something like physical in return, you can go to shop.delinuxcast.org. That's my store. You can get awesome shirts like this one if you just happen to love them as much as I do. I also have hats and t-shirts and hoodies and backpacks and all sorts of other stuff. So if you want to support me with merch, you can do that as well. Shop.delinuxcast.org. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very 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 much for your support i don't i don't think that i can thank you enough to be honest with you so just thank you so much for your support thanks if you're just if you can't support me monetarily but you're just watching all the way to the end of these videos every time i thank you as well seriously everybody who watches my videos i'm so thankful for that so thank you for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time